Welcome to Lecture Online. Continuing with the method of sections, we now are going to do what we didn't do on the video before this one. We calculated the force between C and D. Again, what we did was we took the overall structure, the bridge, we made a section, we separated a section over there, we drew in the forces, the force DG, the force GH, and the force CD. Now, in the previous video, we realized that the force was a force of compression, which means the force is actually pushing against D rather than pulling on D. These two forces are correct in the direction. Here, we just assume that they're forces of tension, but we could be completely wrong. And if we're wrong, we'll get a negative answer, which means it's actually a compression force rather than a tension force. Let's start with finding the force between G and H. That's this force right here. We need to put a pivot point on there somewhere. Let's take the pivot point right here, the pivot point D. We can say that the moment about point D must equal zero, and let's sum up all the moments about point D. Notice that the 6,000 Newton force goes right through here, so we don't need that. And we do have a 9,000 Newton force this way, causing a counterclockwise moment that is a positive 9,000 multiplied times the distance of three meters from there to there. That would be three. Then notice that these two forces go right through the pivot point, so we don't have to worry about that. We just have one more unknown force, GH. And would that be a negative or a positive force? Well, this causes a clockwise torque about point D. That means it's a negative force between G and H multiplied times the distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point here. That would be a four meter distance. This allows us to find the force between G and H. When we move this to the other side, it becomes positive. We have force GH times four equals 9,000 newtons times three. We now divide both sides by four. And so it becomes three quarters of 9,000 newtons. 9,000 times three divided by four, and that would be 6,750 newtons. 6,750 newtons. Now notice I got a positive answer, which means I drew the direction of the force correctly. That means the member from GTH is under tension. So this is equal to 6,750 newtons, and the beam is under tension. We drew that in the correct direction. Now we have one more. It's a little bit more difficult because the next one is slanted, right? That one runs, the member runs from D to G. That's at an angle. But at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take the pivot point at H. So the sum of the moments at H equals zero. Notice at H, I can ignore FGH. I can ignore the 6,000 Newton force, but I can't ignore this force right here. This gives us a counterclockwise motion that's equal to minus 9,000 Newtons times the distance of three meters from there to there. We have this force right here, which causes a clockwise motion that's minus, whoop, no, I'll take that back. Sorry. Confusing you here. Since it's counterclockwise, it's a positive 9,000. But this one is a negative because it's clockwise. So negative 9,000 newtons times a distance of 4 meters because the distance from there to there is 4 meters. Now we have one more right here, which is that will give us a counterclockwise direction force or moment, I should say. That's plus FDG now. What is the distance? The distance would be distance right here, but that's hard to, to calculate. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with this angle here. What we can say that we can take this distance, multiply times the cosine of this angle to give us the effective distance between this force, the line of action of this force, and the pivot point H, which means we're going to take the distance of three meters, multiply times the cosine of theta. So there's the angle of theta. I now have to find the angle theta. I can do that with the arc tangent. Theta is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side of the angle, which is this side right here, that's three meters, divided by the adjacent side of the angle, which is four meters, which means we're looking for the angle whose arc tangent is three quarters. 0.75, take the inverse tangent, and we get 36.87 degrees. Theta is equal to 36.87 degrees. Once we have the angle, we can now solve that for FDG. Moving both to the other side, turning the equation around, I have FDG multiplied times three, multiplied times the cosine of 36 degrees and 
0.87 is equal to, when you move this across, it becomes positive. That would be positive 9,000 newtons times 4 meters, minus when you bring this across, that comes a negative 9,000 newtons times 3 meters. And now when we divide both sides by 3 times the cosine of 36.87 degrees, I can finally find the force between D and G. Notice it looks like I'm going to get a positive quantity. This is bigger than this. It's a positive quantity, which means that this will also be a member under tension. That gives us 9,000 in the numerator, divided by 3, and divided by 36.87, take the cosine of that, and I get a total of 3,750 newtons. So the force on DG is a positive 3,750 newtons. Since it's positive, I drew this in the correct direction. That's also under tension. So this beam is under tension. This beam is under tension. And we can write tension right here. And that's how we use the method of sections, where we simply cut the structure, the bridge, where we want to find the force on the members. We take that section, put it out separately. We write down all the forces acting on that section. And then we do the sum of the moments at a particular point, strategically picked, so we can eliminate all other unknowns and then solve for the one unknown we're looking for. If we get a negative answer, then we drew the, end, the arrow in the wrong direction like this one. We have to reverse the direction to indicate that's a compression rather than a tension force on that member. And that's how we find the force on any member in any structure like that. On the next video, we'll show you that you can actually use this section or use the other section to accomplish that. So we'll go ahead and find the force on the member using both sections of the bridge as we cut it. And you'll see that it really doesn't matter. You always will get the same answer using that technique. And that's how it's done.